patient. So, um, um, again, thankful to be here. Um, if you would turn in your Bibles to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. I'm going to be reading one verse of scripture. Um, Judges chapter 6, verse 24. Or verse 23 and 24. I'm sorry. Verse 23, the Lord said to him, Gideon, peace to you and do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar, built an altar there to the Lord and named it. The Lord is peace. To this day, it is still an orpha, orpha of these rights. Uh, <laughs> I'm not always good with those. If you would pray for me. Heavenly Father, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy to us. Lord, I thank you that you are here with us today. I am thankful for those who are here. And Lord, I thank you that, um, that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you for everything you've done for us and everything you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, whenever you look up in verse 24, if you look at um, where it says right there, the Lord is peace. And the Hebrew term that is Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. He is peace. God is peace. Um, and if we have ever, in any other time of this world, that, that, that's at least as long as I've been alive, um, 49 years or so, there has never been a time in my life where I've looked around and said, we need the peace of God. The world is in need of peace. For at least the last six or seven years, we have been in a country that has been in what, what looks to be a total chaos. We've got people in the streets firebombing cars. We've got people shooting each other. In the, in the city of Chicago alone, there was one... Like last year, I think it was, there was 1,400 people shot and killed. Sound like a peaceful place. Does anybody want to move there? No, I don't want to move there. That would have to be a call from God. We want you to, I want you to go to Chicago. Well, they're killing people up there. And it doesn't seem like anything is being done. So we have seen a, an increase in mass shootings. Some of those have started being in churches. You know, years ago, you didn't hear of anybody shooting up a church. But they don't think much about it now. They will walk in during the service with a gun, and they will start firing. Um, that's why I'm thankful that I have uh, Brother Buck here, who... <laughs> <laughs> and this, and this, uh, and I'm told not just Brother Buck, but I'm told that there are several other people in church that are good with a gun. So, <laughs> so I'm thankful for those people. <clears throat> so we've seen an increase in mass shootings. We have people who are going on social media and bullying people to the point of suicide. They have taken, they have, they will get on social media and. Or, some, or they will text them if they have their phone and they will bully them to the point that they have stolen their peace. They will bully them to the point of saying, I can't live this life anymore because of what they're saying about me. 
they have taken that person's peace that they had and said, and they're saying, it's enough. There are people yelling into their phone cameras, cursing at the top of their lungs over the right to kill a baby. They will do the same if I say that a man isn't a woman or a woman isn't a man. <clears throat> Look, it's ter- that's one of the reasons I've got off uh, a lot of the social media is because I'm tired of people yelling at me. <laughs> But it's going to happen every once in a while. It does. So the anger within, with the anger within them at times almost looks demonic in nature. And the more that I see, the more I believe that it is. The thing, that it, the thing is that it isn't coming from a large majority of people. It's coming from a small minority of people. The small minority of people is pushing people around. They're pushing the church around. And they are making, they are causing the church to look at themselves and say, "Do I really believe that homosexuality is wrong? Do I really believe that a man is a man and a woman is a woman?" They're causing people in the church to think this. They're causing people in the church to to start thinking like them, to start thinking like the world. And the church is not supposed to be thinking like the world. We are com- to be the complete opposite of the world. We should be challenging what they say. But are we strong enough? Are we spiritually strong enough to do that? Um, are we at peace within ourselves? Are we at peace within ourselves to stand up and say, whether, a, whether they yell at me or whether they scream at me or if they cancel me or if they knock me off my page, whatever, I, will, I am at peace with that. And they can do whatever they want to. So, the th- um, and I know at times I've said to myself, I, even though um, I just want them to leave me alone. I just want people to stop yelling at me. I want, just, I want just the pressure to be off of me. But Jesus never said that the pressure would be off of you. He said, there are, are going to be those who hate you because of me and because of who you serve. They're going to hate you. And that can, at times, it can and does, at times, steal the peace within us that we have through Jesus Christ. Um, And so I just have to learn to stay in the peace that God. So how can we find peace? We find it in God. We cannot find peace in anything in this world. We cannot find peace in alcohol. We cannot find peace in drugs. We cannot find the peace in any other thing that this world has to offer. He is the only one that provides true peace. And we've got to remember that he is the one that provides it. We've got to remember that he is the one that we turn to when we need peace. We got to remember that he is the one that we turn to when we need joy, when we need um, just lifting up in general. We got to be, we've got to learn to turn to our Christian brother who is serving the Lord, who has that same peace, who has that same joy, and maybe talk to them about it and talk to the Lord about it. We got to pray, pray to the Lord about it. And, but he is the one who provides that for us. Um, if anything, nowadays, we've got to remember that God is a provider. Uh, the government is not, I said this last night at prayer meeting, the, the government cannot provide for us what, what we need. The government cannot provide peace. Can't. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who think that. The reason that they think that is because they don't believe in God. They have no God to turn to, so they have to turn to the government. But I, I believe that um, that we cannot that He is the provider of everything we need, um, spiritually and financially, and and the healing that we need in our body. God is the provider of that. We have some medications that will keep us alive and keep us ticking, 
but ultimately God is our healer. Amen? Amen, I think so. So Gideon called the place, of, called this place, the Lord is peace. One translation says the Lord, that the Lord makes peace. So what's going on in Gideon's life at this point? Gideon at this point, God has called Gideon to be a leader in Israel. And Gideon says, are you sure that's the one? You sure that's me? I'm over here. I'm just a farm boy. I've never been in a fight. I've never been in the army. I don't know what to do if, if you did. I'm kind of that way myself. Um, I'm just, I've never been in the military. Um, I wouldn't know really. I know how to pull the trigger, but as far as hitting what I'm, as far as hitting what I'm shooting at, that's a different thing. Um, so Gideon is saying, are you sure that's me that you're talking to? And he says, so he gets his answer. And so he is at peace with himself and says, okay, this is where God wants me. Until he got up the next day <laughs> and he had a little doubt. But at this point, he says, this is where God wants me. He says, the Lord has made peace. The Lord has made peace in his heart and God will make peace with everything in our heart. Whatever trouble we're going through, God can make the peace that we need. If you are having trouble with your brother or your sister, God will make peace. If you're having family troubles, you and your mom don't get along, you and your dad don't get along, you and anybody that you work with, if you guys don't get along, God can make peace. We just got to be willing to take it. We got to be willing to accept it. Um, so in John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And do not let your, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So the peace that Jesus left, he left with us. If you are a Christian, here today, you have the peace that goes beyond understanding. I have watched Sister Cologne in this time. Sister Cologne is at peace with this situation. Why? Any other, anybody else with that? that anybody else would probably be out of their mind with worry and, and they would be, not that she doesn't worry, I'm sure she does worry some, but it seems to me that she has a peace about this. This is her husband. She believes that God is her provision. She believes that God is if God wants to, he can raise him up right now. He can heal him right now. We are, should be at peace. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> if you need peace tonight, God wants to give that to you. If your heart and your mind, if you would, I'm done. If your heart and your mind is, is troubled about anything, if your mind is troubled about your children, if your mind is troubled about your parents, if your mind is troubled about anything that's going on, look, it looks bad out there. It looks like, where is God in this situation? But we've got to know within our hearts and have a peace within our heart that God is knowing and he does know what's going on and he is going to provide for us what we need if we need it look if the if a if a full on depression hits this hits this country 
like it did back in the Great Depression. People back then, they were able, they were able to farm and they were able to grow their own food and, and they knew what to do. And I don't know how to do that. I know that meat comes to, from the store. <laughs> I would look if I went hunting and I went to and I we actually killed something, I wouldn't know how to dress it out. I'm just being honest with you. So if a Great Depression, another Great Depression comes along, God's going to have to send me somebody who showed me how to do that. Somebody, or if he doesn't send me somebody, somebody to, 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 to learn how to do it, he's going to have to just send the food. Right? He's just going to have to provide it. Because that's what he does for those who are his children. He provides for those who are his. I've seen it time after time in our own life, God provide for us. I've seen it time after time in other people's lives where God has, has stepped in at the right time and given to them. I've heard preacher after preacher from when, when back when the church of God was smaller than it is and, and they didn't have all the money that we have now where the preacher he wasn't getting paid a lot and he had three kids and his wife came to him and said we don't have anything else we don't have nothing else Sister, Sister Noble over in LaBelle she told this story and it happened on several occasions in their, in their ministry where they didn't have nothing else and all they did was pray and within an hour within the hour somebody showed up with bags of groceries They had peace in the situation because they knew God was on their side. We've got to know that there is and, and have peace in the situation that even though this country is going to hell in a handbasket, that God can deliver us. That God will bring peace to the situation. Even if the country falls, we know that God is with us. Come on, people. We've got to know. We've got to realize that God is with us and that God is going to provide for us in whatever situation. If you need healing tonight, God can provide that healing. If you need peace in your heart about any situation, God wants to touch you tonight in these altars. If you'll stand, please. Jesus said he left us with peace. Peace that God gives. And he makes it He, make, he makes the statement right there. Not as the world gives you. Because he knows right then that people are trusting too much in the world. Not as the world gives you, but as I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. He is the only one who can provide us with perfect peace. So when we look to the future and we see these perilous times ahead he will be our peace in that time some may walk away at that time some may just give up on Jesus but I pray God that he is our peace in those times Heavenly Father I praise you Lord I thank you Lord for your grace your mercy to us Lord I thank you that you are here with us Lord, I thank you that you that you bring the perfect peace. God, the peace that not, not that the world gives, but the peace that only you can give. The peace that says, no matter what, I'm going to trust in you, God. No 
matter what, I've got a God who owns it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills that we can trust in you and that we can have a peace in our life. Lord, I praise you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. If you would like to pray tonight, these altars are open.